Welcome back to the brushing test series in which I test out a whole bunch of size 10 round brushes. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Jackson Arts Kite Brush. As always, this is a round size 10 brush. The series number is a 561 and it is a synthetic Kalinsky. So it's a synthetic fiber friendly for vegans that is supposed to mimic a Kalinsky. The Promo for it. it says designed to resist splitting, bending and shedding features a unique type of stiff fiber that resembles the structure of natural hair. So it, the barrel feels a tiny bit thicker, but I don't think you will notice it unless you have maybe the Da Vinci Cosmo top spin also on your brush pot and using one after the other. Then you might notice that it's thicker, but let's do the snap test. I would say it's medium to firm kind of snap. It is suitable for watercolor and it comes in sizes from double zero to 14. So quite a narrow range of sizes, but also the most useful and most probably commonly used size ranges. The overall brush size is 22.5 centimeters. The bristle length is 3.2 centimeters and the width is a seven millimeter, which is about 0.2 millimeter wider than your average size 10. It is priced at £21.50 over on Jackson's and that is $29. So it's a little bit pricier than some of the brushes we've seen in this series. This is the Jackson Kite fully loaded with water. Not the thinnest of tip. It also kind of wants to do its own thing. You can see that it holds some water in the belly, not as much as the Casanillo, but it does hold a lot more than the Jackson Torre did. But the tip doesn't stay together too much. And I, when I paint with this, it felt like the tip was a little bit blunt. Let's take a look at how it performs. And as you can see, it holds a lot of water but I would say that it offloads the water at the beginning quite a lot and then you get some very consistent wetness or dryness that lasts for a long time. One thing I did notice though when I was doing the lines was that it has this weird feeling that the tip isn't quite touching the paint. It's I felt very disconnected from the brush in that when it's down, I couldn't tell. Most of the time when you put your brush on paper, you get feedback from the brush that it's touching the paper and you're like, right, the brush is on there, let's go. But you, that sensation was missing for some reason, which I certainly haven't had in the brushes I've tested in this series before. So that's just something to look out for. I like to get a lot of feedback from my brush in terms of sensations when it's touching the paper and stuff. So I really struggled to do lines with this brush. In terms of release up and down, this brush does struggle with water release. It's quite uneven. You also get really rough edges very quickly. Like even on the first load here, you get uneven broken edges and you definitely get quite strong ones. But those are not the biggest problems. The biggest problem I had with this brush was the fact that it has a weird flex to it, especially in the third bump on both, where I felt like the brush decided to go one way when I was wanting to still keep it going straight like the others. It has a weird firmness to it that has a mind of its own. So that's something to look out for. In terms of max width, it is 2.1 centimeters wide and so pretty middle of the range of the brushes we've tested so far but you do get broken edges a lot that's the thing i found is either a feature or a problem depending on what you're looking for is that the edges break up a lot i would personally find that really annoying because i like nice crisp lines but you might be looking for something like that in terms of belly jug I noticed on this one that there's lots of white dots coming through on it and that's when the paint didn't really go into the brush too much and it 
basically pops the surface. So I feel like this brush didn't stick to the paper as much. And I have that same feedback on the gradation where I said, feels like it doesn't want to attach to the paper. And that's in huge contrast to the Da Vinci Casanero, which I will link up here as well, which really just like almost suctioned itself to the paper and just loved being on that paper. And for me personally, this is a problem because I really like the brush to make good full contact with the paper so that I don't get all this white bits coming through on the areas that should be solid. Yes, these bits, the larger bits should be white, but these bits shouldn't have white bits in. So for me, that is a problem. In terms of thin lines, it's quite uneven. And if you notice, there's a lot of curve on the short ones. It definitely has a mind of its own and it wants to do its own thing, which is not necessarily a good thing when you want to be in control of what's happening. In terms of leaf, the beginning is quite stubby, but weirdly it gets very thin on the uplift. So that is a good thing if you just take a look at the up action but it is stubby at the top and the lines break up quite easily in terms of snake i did kind of have a struggle on this corner you can see that this is a bit kinked and also here it's not as quite soft a curve as a softer brush would be able to provide so i would say this is at least a medium firmness in brush in terms of flat wash, this was one load of paint, but unlike the Casanio, where it just went on forever, I felt that this was the end of how much it could cover in one load. And it really needed a lot of effort to just spread the paint around. It felt like you didn't want to be on the paper. In terms of lift, though, it's really good at the lift. It's a firm brush. You're going to get a lot of paint left there. In terms of dashes, it's quite consistent, which is nice. You don't get tadpoling, which is also nice, but it's not the thinnest of dashes you can find. So what do I think of this brush? I personally struggled with this because it does have a mind of its own. It wants to curve and it has a firmness that's not too firm, but then it catches you in unexpected moments like doing the snake and things and the biggest problem is the fact that it didn't feel like it wanted to be on the paper and the fact that you can't really get feedback of when the brush touches the paper. I personally wouldn't use this in my own painting but that's because I really really like good wet brush that can suction itself onto the paper almost and give me nice crisp edge but it might be useful for some people maybe collaborative <laughs> effort with your brush and see what the brush wants to provide for you rather than being in full in control and as much as I say that in a sarcastic tone that is a valid technique and that is a valid investigation and study into art if that is what you are looking for maybe if you want to collaborate with your art material that dictates more than other materials that just do what you wanted to do there are other better brushes out there and to recommend this brush would have to be a very niche person that again wants to do that collab with the brush and that's it wouldn't recommend this over other brushes that we've covered in the series. I hope that was useful to you. If it was, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Do let me know in the comments down below if you love the kite and why you love the kite, because that would be really useful. Maybe I'm missing something. If you have used the kite and you didn't enjoy the experience either, then do also let me know in the comments. It's really good to gather all your experiences it's super useful for the community. In the next episode, we are going to be carrying on with the Jacksons and we're going to be taking a look at the Jacksons Studio Synthetic. So do look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will speak to you in the next episode. Bye!